We are hoping to get this all planted tomorrow. So we are in a bit of a time crunch. All of this equipment is stuff that I am, of course, very unfamiliar with because I don't usually use all this big stuff. I broke the pins off. Add it to the tab. This season, we're proud to partner with Advancing Eco Agriculture, providing regenerative solutions for growers and greencoverseed.com. We are here at the home farm in Minnesota. If you're just tuning in for the first time in a while, you might be wondering why things are looking a little different. It's because we are at my dad's farm where he grew up and his dad grew up. And this year, my dad and I have taken on the task of wanting to do things a little bit differently, do some experiments and see how it goes. Before we get going, I wanna say a big thank you to our farmers, Pat and Jim O'Connor, who have been incredibly helpful on getting this project going. What are you the most excited about? Seeing the end results. Um... You know, the, the books you had me reading stuff on soil health are very informative. just want to see what happens in dealing with reality. So what exactly are we changing here? Well, we're actually changing a lot of stuff. Starting with using non-GMO corn, we are also greatly reducing the input. So we're lessening fertilizers. We are eliminating herbicide, eliminating fungicide, eliminating pesticide. And on top of that, we are also going no-till for year two now at the farm. We're also experimenting with doubling up our corn spacing just to see what happens if we go to a 60-inch row instead of a 30 so we can plant a cover crop in between during the growing season. It's all really risky. So right now we're on our way to go pick up the seed from Albert Lee. So we decided to go with Albert Lee seed because it's very local here. It's only 20 miles from the farm and they do a lot of hybridizing programs there. And so they're really knowledgeable in this area, but also in kind of the various corn hybrids. So we decided to go with a non-GMO. We're also doing a non, no fungicide treatment on it. We've got all the seed. So now we're gonna drop that off, go grab the inoculant. Got the seed unloaded. Let's go get the inoculant. So one of the theories that we are testing is how much can we dial back our nitrogen application? So over application of nitrogen is a big problem for conventional farming. As we've talked about before on the channel, over applying fertilizers like nitrogen can actually make your plants more dependent on them. So that means you come into a cycle of having to apply more fertilizer than you need. So this is expensive on a farm scale. So instead we're experimenting with a lot of inoculants. So lots of microbes, azosporillums, rhizobia. We are doing all of those things and we are using the products from Advancing Eco Agriculture like BioCoat Gold and also the inoculants in their soil primers so that we can hopefully dial back the amount of fertilizer we're having to use but without seeing too much of a hit on yields because of course Farming does have to be profitable at the end of the day. We also use things like compost in our home gardens, but that doesn't really work as well on an agricultural scale. So while you guys have seen me do inoculants for my seeds that I'm starting in my home garden at my market farm, I have never done it on this scale. So our first step was kind of figuring out how are we going to do 600 pounds of corn and inoculate it. We decided to just kind of spread it out on tarps and then spray it with a sprayer so that it could be a fine, it's supposed to be kind of a fine mist. Usually you would do this like on a conveyor belt or with an auger, but we don't have any of those things. So we're just kind of bootstrapping it. So now we're gonna let it dry. Tomorrow it's gonna to go into the planter with some powder inoculant and some other things. I'm sure it's going to go perfectly smoothly. So first we're using a product called Seed Flare and then we're applying an inoculant. This is supposed to help the seed germinate faster and make the soil life associations earlier. All right, it's planting day, and uh, Pat is here, busy, as always, to help show me what to do, because obviously this machine is huge, way beyond anything I am comfortable with, since I'm used to planting by hand. So first step is we're going to get all of our products in. So we've got 
basically what's called the soil primer from Advancing Eco Ag, which is a mix of Rejuvenate, which has molasses and seaweed in it. And then we've got a zinc, we've got a boron, and then we have a bunch of biologicals. So we have all of this, which is called spectrum, which is all inoculant based. So as a scrolums and various things like that, that'll help the nitrogen fixation on the corn. So that hopefully we won't have to apply as much fertilizer. We'll see how that goes. But so we're gonna mix this all into the tank. Pat's gonna show me how, <laughs> and I'll probably end up covered in half of it. Why don't we put it into smaller buckets? I don't know, Bree, this is your project. So 64 times 15. The tank itself does have agitation. All right, that helps. Listen, if it goes wrong, it's my fault. Hey, watch your head. Ah. So it all goes in that hopper and then air blows it to each individual row. Why don't you pour one in, I'll get a shot and then I'll keep. I don't, you pour one in. <laughs> it's patting the tough love. <laughs> hey. Okay. Oh no, you're gonna have me do it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> We'll say this. There's not 80,000 kernels in each one. That's industry standard. Well, there were until we dumped them on the floor and you, then you put them back in. <laughs> you didn't count them out before you put them back in? We got debris in the, in the tank. There's a piece of twine that, that could cause. And make sure the camera gets this hurt. <laughs> Well, I'm exhausted and we haven't even started planting yet, so. <laughs> okay, so once I was done goofing around in the seed hopper, it was time to feed all of that soil primer product into the mixer. So that is going to get directly applied into the furrows as the corn gets planted. So this helps with efficiency. It's going directly into the furrow. It's going to be in contact with the seed. So all of those soil associations will be formed early on. Probably gonna, he's going to make you wash your hands. Oh, yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I already washed my hands. These are not that much better. Than we decided we're going to do 30-inch spacing on the headlands just because otherwise if you do 60-inch on the ends, we're going to end up losing a lot of planting space. So, and that way we'll have a good comparison to you. These planting machines are incredibly complicated. It is all fed through these hoppers, through these hoses and into the individual planters. So trying to configure it to plant every other line was a little bit complicated, but luckily Pat was able to figure it out. So we are planting every other row, but we are also doing a comparison with the 30 inch rows. So we wanna see what happens on the yield on a 30 inch corn spacing versus a 60 inch corn spacing see if it has any impact on the yield. And of course that 60 inch spacing is going to let us get a cover crop in and it's going to let some sunlight get down to that cover crop. So that's gonna be helping to form some organic matter in the soil as the corn is growing. Otherwise, the problem that we always run into at the farm with trying to do a cover crop is that it's a cold climate. So we have a really limited window of opportunity to get that cover crop growing, but we'll be showing you more about that in our upcoming video. So here you can see we've got the booms coming in and extending out. These planters are so incredible with the GPS and how they're able to monitor exactly where everything's been planted. Now, of course, we did clog up the filter a little bit because these inoculants are thick. They have a lot of bulk to them. And so we had to rinse out the filter a few times. And luckily, Pat was really patient with us. I, and even though the machine keeps a really good tabs on making sure every single row gets planted with corn seed, I wanted to make sure. So Pat and I jumped out and we measured the spacing in between each of the rows and made sure everything was getting planted. You think once we get it planted, it's going to be okay? No, it's a pretty big first step. Without that, we got nothing. Just like I do at home every day, I was going to check and see how everything was growing and if it was germinating. We just planted our cover crop, so I'm going to be bringing you that video here in a couple days, and we'll also be talking about how you can do that at your home garden. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know we had a lot of information in here. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and we'll see you guys around here next time at the farm. Don't forget to subscribe for updates on our corn crop.